and welcome to the 72 pin connector podcast featuring a messed up video overlay what's going on everybody? Uh, it happens because <laughs> of the way discord treats stuff yes so. there we go kind of sort of sort of we'll get it don't worry about it that's not gonna fix it that right there fixes it kind of what's up everybody Welcome to the 72 Pin Connector Podcast, the only podcast where you can join the conversation and the game. We're going to be playing some Rocket League soon, as soon as I fix this. But it's another interesting episode because, um, well, first off, all three of us are back, finally. Welcome back, Eric. Thank you. Thank you. It's been, and, been a while. Yeah. And secondly, um, Eric's at my house. We're recording from the same place. Uh... Yeah, so um, this is the first time um, it's just been Adam and I co-located, or located in the same spot. We've had Tom and I, we've had Tom, Adam, and I, but never Adam and I. So yeah, this is a first. There's a first for everything. Yeah, yes there is. You know what, that's going to stay like that, that's fine. Yeah, we're good, we're Gucci, we good. We good. We good. Oh, wait. What? 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 Now, guys, now we good. Talk. Now we good. I do want to talk about something something that's also brand new. Oh, what else? What else mm. is new? Oh my god. So, I'm trying to be less fat. So, I've been playing an, an absolute insane amount of Beat Saber recently, but I'm also trying to change my diet a, a bit. I'm still a fat ass, but I'm still making tiny changes. What are those changes? Less soda, more water. So, I got... Ooh. Uh, some of this ginger sparkling water. It's quite literally like ginger seltzer, but without sugar. So you just get like the, the nice punch of the ginger, but without the sweetness to balance it out. So it's just super gingery all the time. And it's, it's beautiful. Uh, that sounds really good. I love ginger stuff. So you know how like you crack a good ginger ale and you go to take that first sip, but you get hit with the wave of like, atomized ginger and you start like coughing and choking <laughs> on it that's, that's what this did so you spicy know spicy bite yeah the lovely spicy bite that's my that's the best part for sure it's, it's beautiful that's why i like um like a really nice ginger ale, ale or ginger beer more than like canada dry or something because to me canada dry almost just tastes like seven up with a yeah. almost hint of ginger whereas yeah. like reeds or something is like what up it's ginger <laughs> Hope you Unless like I'm being actively burned by the ginger ale, it's not hot enough. <laughs> right. I didn't come away from that stuff with like chemical burns or something. I'm like, yes, it's, it's pretty good. I died, <laughs> but it's good. pretty good. I'm oh, struggling to breathe, God. but this is good <laughs> shit. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's how I feel about my ginger ale. I I like all ginger ale. Like, give me some Verners, give me some Canada Dry. Give me some actual ginger beer. I like it all. Verner's is weird. I don't know what it is. It tastes way different to me. I, I really you know dig me some Verner's. You know what the weirdest thing about Verner's is? It's like apparently a specialty soda. Like for everyone who, who lives in Ohio, it's just like, oh yeah, Verner's cool, whatever. Like it's not even that great. You hardly ever think of it unless it's like around. But yeah. apparently outside of the little like Midwest nexus where it is, it's like fucking jones soda or ibc or any oh, one really? of those specialty sodas people go nuts over it and i don't know why it's just not that good it is i really dig it like it's it's fine but it's not it, amazing it's better than canada dry well yeah mm. oh adam disagrees but, on that i don't yeah. know i don't they're both okay i guess neither, neither one is my first choice but yeah so i yeah Ginger. Yeah, there goes Some... Slugger. How's, how's that? There you now go. Now I fixed my camera. I think he's talking we, about. We um, now he's talking about something else, but I don't know that I could fix that without. Ah. Yeah, fuck doing it. a bunch of stuff. We're rolling with it because we we slapped a lot of shit together last second on Slugger. If you're talking about the <laughs> like the black bar underneath him where he doesn't fill in the the window all the way, yeah, we know. I just I messed up something. Before, like right before the cast, it was literally perfect we, ten we minutes know. ago. <laughs> well, we know about we know. our incompetence. We just don't care to fix it right now. 
Listen, you don't want to know what we went through to get this setup <laughs> working. It, yeah, it, it's. Let um, me just just to, just to sum it up. Duct tape is involved. <laughs> Not that says high quality rigs like we are using duct tape. <laughs> so we actually. So Eric's camera is. We were we were running into problems with cables, right? Because um, I didn't bring because my we're sitting next extender. to each other. He's got like laptop setups and like our headphone cables are crossing and. And all kinds of stuff. So, like, his webcam is up here on one of my speakers. And we kept knocking it off because the cable stretches barely to my PC. Um, so we had to duct tape that on top of the speaker. Yeah. But it works. Because we have, like, two laptops, two monitors on, like, a desk and a half. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> we're, we're doing what we can. Almost broke a lamp earlier. Like, it was, it was a mess. Nice. But we got it done. Yeah, we got it done. So how's your week been, Tom? Actually, um, yeah, uh, actually, kind of, kind of shit. Not gonna lie, <laughs> not gonna get into it on on the podcast. Oh, yeah. We're here to have a good time, yeah. but kind of an absolute shit show of a week. Oh, that sucks. Um, but I did get the opportunity to uh, dip into. Uh, into some chill games, so stuff that I don't usually usually play. I needed something low key, something I could just literally sit here, drink this incredible, just a- amazing white Russian, and veg out while playing something. Uh, so I, I dipped into City Skylines again. I bought some of the DLC and loaded it back up, and it's still fucking great. Nice. That game always looked looked really cool. I'm not super big City on like the, lines. yeah, I'm not super big on like all the tycoon type games and those city builders and stuff, but um, that one looked really cool. If you miss the heyday of Sim City and you really want something that scratches that itch, I cannot recommend City Skylines highly. Um, the the DLC I feel is a little overpriced for what it is, but um, you know the the core game you can get on sale for really cheap now, and it's really really good alone it's a good game i like it was that one of the ones that was free on epic store or was it just like heavily on sale recently or something Um, it's been on sale a lot i don't know if it's ever been free yeah i don't know where i was thinking that from but it it regularly goes on sale for like nothing now that was probably it civ 4 is free this week thank you slugger yeah so uh if you guys want civ 4 six no, four. <laughs> I, I, six I gotta was, say, like six. Oh, six was free two days ago on Epic. On Epic, really? Yeah, that's brand new. Why is that? F- it's not brand new. It's over a year old. Huh. So anytime because it comes super to Civ, generous. like I've I've learned my lesson about buying Civ games at launch because they launch the base game, um, which is it's fine, it's it's fine, but. Um, like the the DLC that comes out afterwards actually fundamentally changes the game. It makes it so 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 much better. So anytime I want a new Civ, I have to wait like a year or two after the main you know numbered release releases, and then go grab that plus all the DLC and like some collector's bundle for thirty bucks. Yeah, unless you're um, a hardcore Civ player, always get the last year's Civ or last time Civ. Yeah. It's just it's not. Like, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with buying a, a Civ game immediately, but it's just not its not as good as it should be. I'll say that. I don't even want to say that. They just realize different things that can change with the systems, and they change it throughout the life of the game. That's so yeah. weird to think about. Like, the worst time to buy a game is when it first comes out. I mean, I guess a lot of games launch with bugs and stuff, but usually there's the whole hype cycle well this is because of if you buy it when like you bought five, civ 5 when civ 6 came out for 20 bucks you would have got civ 5 and like six different dlcs mm-hmm. that add and their dlcs aren't like normal game dlcs where it's like oh a new map blah blah, blah. Mm-hmm. we're talking like big changing things okay fundamental system changes and it, it's really really good hmm well, first match into overtime, boys. Hey, let's like, do it. Um, trying to yeah. trying to compare Civ Five at launch to Civ Five. The here's actually everything we wanted to do with the game. 
Um, it's it's a totally different experience. It's and, really really cool. And Slugger uh, did call out it is six that's still free right now. Okay, all right. Which it's free. Pick that shit up. Yeah. If you like anything tactical, I've actually never. I've never played a Civ, uh, Civ game. It's a turn oh, based. We should, it's we should really play good. Some Civ. I don't. I love Civilization. See, it doesn't seem like something I would like at all. You, but I'm still willing to try it. I mean, you liked RTSs. Kind of, but not anymore. Oh, oh okay. Well, then, I did for a while. I don't know if I could get into another one. It's a slower RTS is the best way to put it. And that's not even right. It's just... It's, it's turn-based strategy. I, I cannot call it an RTS. Oh, I, I didn't mean as in, like, the gameplay, but just how it ends up feeling. It's very army-centric. You don't have to be, but every time I play it, it's been very army-centric. Yeah, I always concentrate on like securing the cultural victories or or even like if the game runs really long, it usually doesn't. But if it runs really long, you can win by getting the space race going, which is pretty cool. So like it's it's one you of do those like the pacifist cool, run. Yeah, it's one of those cool games that you don't have to slaughter all the other nations. Like if you want to play like a, a fucking world superpower, keeping the peace sort of thing, like, hey, we're going to win through culture and arts and and stuff like that, then uh, you can. That's totally valid. I don't know if you could actually get through a match without fighting because of the way the AI works, though. Typically, Not it ends without up fighting in, completely. Yeah, eventually it ends up in a point where you're going to have to make a decision that's going to piss off one faction. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's either side with A or side with B. Now, one of the things, uh, like early Civ history, I loved it so much. Um, the whole reason, like, there's an entire meme about Gandhi just nuking the fuck out of everybody <laughs> oh. in Sim. And the whole reason that happens is because they set his uh, his aggression too low. So there's a formula in the game, and apparently it subtracted some numbers somewhere. And the number rolled over from 0 to 255. So it quite <laughs> literally rolled over from the lowest value over into the highest one due to the way programming and shit works. Uh, so Gandhi by uh, the sheer bug that was this uh, integer rollover it was the most aggressive leader in the game <laughs> so he's That's just like funny. nah fuck you you're getting nuked you're getting nuked we did a sit-in for like two hours <laughs> now you're getting nuked That's yeah amazing. it's quite funny that gandhi would be the um, yeah, of course it was him <laughs> one to get that bug but yeah, it's a good game. Pick up six. It's free. There's no reason not to. And maybe yeah. you end up liking it. But keep in mind, it is a slow game or long, long game. Uh, I guess it doesn't have to be slow, but it can be super long. It can be extremely long. Um, so one of the one of the things I love about Civ is that they lean in hard to their own mythology. So after Civ 1, they're like, mm -hmm. fuck, there's a bug. It was Gandhi. We fucked him up. Uh, do you guys want to fix this? And everyone's like, nah, it's great. We love it for the memes. <laughs> we can't fix this. So then in every Civ game thereafter, Gandhi's just been kind of a hard ass. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, I missed that in a way. Uh oh, we may get punished. So Fuck, Slugger, I miss, Slugger, I miss. Slugger asks in the chat, uh, Taylor ham or pork roll? I don't know what that's um, referring to. We're not New Jersey enough for that one. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm going to say pork roll. Pork rolls, if, if somebody was like, here's two things you've never heard of, Taylor Ham and pork roll, I would probably try the pork roll based off name alone. Also, how the fuck did we yeah. end up in the game so quick? I don't know. Damn it, Tom. My bad. <laughs> yeah, we started talking about games. We didn't talk about Eric driving like a million hours across the whole country. Yeah. It was, all, it was only 37. <laughs> only 37. Actual drive time. Only. <laughs> Jesus. So um, I will say that moving from Ohio to Washington, you're like, damn, Washington's pretty. But now I'm going to say, as much as I am damn Washington's pretty, holy shit, it is the ugliest of the western states. <laughs> like, That's really saying um, something, too. Yeah, I agree, actually. I used to live in Oregon, and Oregon is far, far, far prettier than Washington. Idaho is the hidden gem of the northwest that no one talks really? about. It was beautiful. Going across Did the you northern get panhandle. No, Tell no, me we, you got some potatoes. Get some you potatoes. just reach out of the car window, you stick your hand down, you grab a potato right from the ground. It's Idaho, baby. It's raining spuds. No, um, <laughs> that would be but, very 
damaging. <laughs> well, not if they're boiled soft. And it's just really tasty. But um, it's just I don't like, know, man. I think if I potato hail. I think if I yeeted a big potato at your head, you'd feel it. Okay, that, that is true. <laughs> but um, let's try this for science. <laughs> it's for science. No, I'm I'm good, dog. I'm good. <laughs> Uh, but it's super pretty. It was very mountainous because it was the northern panhandle. So super mountainous with some rivers and stuff. Montana was gorgeous. Get, got down into Wyoming. Wyoming was fucking beautiful. Fucking uh, pronghorn, a.k.a. antelope everywhere. So, yeah, it was really fucking cool. But, man, it was a long drive. Yeah. I can only imagine. Really long drive. Um, so, yeah. Stayed at a couple hotels because hotels are starting to open back up. They're limited to like only twenty five guests per hotel. Oh wow, damn! So like they're, they're right. still they're still like taking precautions. So like it, it was interesting. However, the one's pool and hot tub was open. There was limits on people, and there was an attendant constantly wiping down the hot tub. Which That's, was interesting. Huh. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. That's not a job I would like to have. No, <laughs> no. Oh, and also Slugger, there was still a complimentary back breakfast, but it was a grab-and-go bag. So it had like yogurt, a muffin, cheese string, or, ching- or cheese string. String cheese. String cheese. God, what's going on with me? Cheese strings. Cheese strings and a bagel in it. But I'm, so I mean, That's like, cool they that still- they're, they're doing that, though. Yeah. yeah, they're still giving you a little something. And even little when you leave something. at like 4 a.m., they still like give you a bag, which is solid. Because we left before fast food was open. Um, so we ran into a gas station that had a uh, trout aquarium, <laughs> literally a fucking aquarium, like Bass Pro oh, Shop style cool. <laughs> in a gas right. station. <clears throat> this thing also had like full scale art on sale and everything. It was bizarre in Montana. Um, yeah, that was that was pretty interesting. I'm trying to think there's something. Else. Oh, yeah. Uh, we got pulled over. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, so um, South Dakota, super flat, open area. Um, so obviously we're speeding. Yeah, yeah, obviously. But I mean, it's 80 miles an hour is the speed limit. Oh, and, shit. Uh, we get to, uh, yep, uh, Midnavi already saying face palm because she <laughs> knows what's up. Um, so we get to Sioux Falls, which is the capital. And during the residential area, they drop it down to 65 miles an hour. And it's for a one oh, mile shit. stretch. It goes 80, 65, and then after a mile, back up to 80. Um, so Gina's driving for this little bit of the stretch and we pass a cop. She's like, oh shit. I'm like, okay, no worries. And all of a sudden, bam, he's on us. So we know we're getting pulled over. There, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. We're going to get pulled over. There's a moment and you know when that moment happens. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, um, we're waiting and all of a sudden, bam, he's on our ass. You can tell he's pulling or going to run the plates. So she gets over to the right lane and he's still running the plates in the left. Just two lane highway. So. This is going to take my hands to explain, but it's it's really fucking interesting. So it gets to the point where she starts worrying. She's like, what do I do? What do I do? I'm like, just drive the speed limit. And all of a sudden we're down to 60. I'm like, you just, just got to keep driving the speed limit. She's getting worried. She's down to 55. Like, Ooh. just got to drive the speed limit. At this point, the cop's trying to get behind us. The car behind us slows down. Gina continues to slow down so there's no space for the cop to get in. <laughs> she was effectively <laughs> cutting the cop off so the cop couldn't get in behind us. <laughs> Uh, it was hilarious. Oh, but that's we, beautiful. She was going uh, eight over. He just gave us a warning. He made her go to the cop car and sit in the cop car, which what? is weird, which is already weird. It had a dog in the back that was under training, so it was barking its head off at her. I mean, she is pretty shady. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> so, yeah, she looks the like a dangerous type. Oh, yeah, of course. Playing I mean, those Zelda games. You know what she's going to do. She's probably got a bomb bag in the back. <laughs> Luckily, she didn't say that. Like, but- <laughs> that's going to fly here, apparently. <laughs> no, I, I've said the word babam on a plane and quickly realized I was fucking up. Um, yeah, but that was about the only really oh shit moment. Everything else was smooth sailing. Dude, out west, 80 miles an hour speed limit. Sign me the fuck that's nice. up everywhere. That's fast. That is really nice. Like, so they, they slow it down in the mountains, but once you're out of the mountains, man, it's. It's go time. Nah, speed it up in the mountains. Come on. Live a little <laughs> or die a little. Whatever's oh, faster. We did cross one other cool thing. In Idaho, there is an amphitheater down in the valley in the middle of the mountains. Like on the interstate, I saw it. I'm like, that is fucking rad. It is down there. There's Ooh. nothing else. It's just an amphitheater, a <clears throat> big amphitheater down in a valley. It's like some big Ooh. famous venue. I want to go to at some point because that was really cool. 
But yeah, cross country, not much games, and now I'm here. So back in Ohio, back where it started. Back where it all started. Back where it all began. One Stole last it. job. Well, except for this iteration. This iteration was kind of a split start. Part Washington, part Ohio. But either way, feels good to be back. Yeah, it's nice to have you back. Yeah. So how about you, Adam? How's your week been? It's been all right. Um, normal work week. Nothing crazy happened. But I did try some Turkish food today for oh. the first time. I never had it before. It was amazing. I don't even know what I got. I don't oh, remember what it's called. I fucked up. Bop. Bop. It was like spicy something kebab. So it's kind of like um, almost like a hamburger patty, but it's made out of lamb. Oh. And it's got like different spices on it. And it's wrapped in, it's not a tortilla, but it's as thin of a tortilla, but it's more like pita bread. Oh. It's like a really, really thin pita bread. And then like a, some sort of tomato sauce over the top of it. Uh, fantastic. Oh. It was so good. They give you a uh, yogurt to dip it in. Yeah, I figured there was yogurt coming yeah. in somewhere. <laughs> I've never had Turkish food. It it was very, very good. Yeah, I've got that. Where did you get it? Pasha Grill at the Green. Okay. I actually Just, had a professor that, I shouldn't say had a professor that owns it. My professor owns that place. Oh. And we were going to do a class get together there. Nice. It was, it was I, really good. Never highly recommended. Never been there. But yeah, that's that's awesome. At some point I plan on taking uh her to the green because Columbus has a equivalent of Easton Mall area. Mm -hmm. So I was just gonna take her to the Dayton one to see, like, see, Dayton's not all bad. It's not all bad. Dayton it has, has some it good has spots. its moments. It has its spots. It also has its not the spots. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of used to live in one of the not the spots. Mm. And then our friend Brett lived right off of ud which is also definitely one of the not spots <laughs> yes proto tricks there is one or two spots the so spots are nice and it's surrounded <laughs> by a whole lot of not spots but there's a yeah there are some areas i wouldn't you know go jogging in or anything my car was broke into six feet from my head while i was asleep <laughs> yeah was I mean, that was at the same time they broke into your car there was a guitar in a case in your trunk. They opened the trunk. They opened the guitar case and didn't take the guitar. Yeah. It was like an $850 guitar. Yep. They left that and took $15 worth of change. <laughs> that's a, on the side note, though, that's that's a lot of change. Yeah, my, my center console does not have $15 worth of change in it. So I had a cousin Vinny. This is how I knew my car got broke into before I saw it. I had a cousin Vinny's cup with all my change in it. And I get outside the door and I see a Cousin Vinny cup sitting in the flower bed. I'm like, oh, what's this doing here? And then there was some other piece of trash that I knew was in my car. I'm like, oh, oh. no. I get there and I just see the guitar out. I'm like, whoo, that, that was my first thoughts. Like my guitar was left in the car all night. Never did that again. Also learned the lesson that you never lock your car doors. Never. You actually leave them open and just make sure your car is empty. Yep. Yep. I learned that one the hard way too. Yep, same here. And I'm assuming we all learned that in the same city. Oh, man. Um, it was, yeah, it was a camping trip, and uh, we had all parked oh. kind of towards the road. Yeah, you remember you remember yep. this story? Yeah. So I had my jacket with my wallet, all of my identifying paperwork, uh, my backpack. Like, it, it had a, a computer in it, like, all this stuff. And this place, like... I used to live at this place, the place where we were going camping. I used to live here. It's not a bad area of town at all. There's literally no one fucking around. <laughs> um, and, yep, we get there, and sure enough, there's a screwdriver with, the like, a tip broken off the end of it. And, um, yeah, all, all the glass, just glass fucking Ugh. everywhere. Uh, didn't great. you have um, some computers that got stolen out of during that? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Me, me and my buddy got our laptops taken. Um, luckily enough, we actually, we worked with our renter's insurance and they said, oh, it was in your car when it got stolen. And we're like, yeah, yeah. So it's, it wasn't, wasn't in our apartment. And that's when we learned that renter's insurance covers a whole lot of shit. They're like, oh, oh yeah, no, we're, we cover car thefts. You're good, man. Oh. Here, take this check, go to Best Buy. I did not know that. Oh, that's really that's cool. cool. What did you just have to be on the property that ha that was insured for renter's insurance? And no, it was it? anywhere. 
Oh, Apparently what? the coverage we got included any, like all of our cars, no matter where they were. Oh, and also it was nice. hell. Note to anyone renting, renter's insurance is dirt cheap. Fucking get it. Yeah. 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 And Prototrix is calling out. I think it depends on your policy. Absolutely. We had like extra computer coverage and stuff like that added because we were tech guys. Yeah. Um, so we we went all out on, on that stuff. But uh, yeah, to Irk's point, renter's insurance, it's I don't, what is it like three, four bucks a month, depending on your policy? Like it's Some... fucking cheap. Some of them are higher. Some of so them are much. like 10, 15 bucks. Like, yeah, like uh, Predatrix is calling out he's lived only places that require it. Um, yeah. I've had some that haven't, but the ones that have normally run about 15 bucks a month because they want you to have like half mil in coverage. Yeah. And that, that's I, uh, not I love renter's insurance. I really do. Yeah, no, PP. Yeah, there, there's you have to have insurance when you have um, P or the mortgage insurance as well, as Dobby calls out. But yeah. Um, also, I don't know if uh, I don't think this person is in our community, but whoever is named Doctor Mantis Toboggan, yes, <laughs> just yes. I don't know what that means, but I like it. Um, it's a uh, Always Sunny reference. Oh, I need to watch more of that show. It's such a good show. It's, it is a good show. Good. I've seen I've I seen some, but I haven't seen them all. Hey, thanks for the sub there, Chris. And there's one other person that we all know. I'm not going to say a name, but uh, he was in Columbus and his car got broken into. The person left the screwdriver that they broke into the back seat of his car with and only took his user manual. What? Broke his window, <laughs> left the screwdriver in the car, and the only took his user manual. Screwdriver is probably more valuable than the manual. <laughs> took, like, all right. Why? Maybe, maybe that was one of those, like, Pro revenge things like ah oh, okay I just want to slightly inconvenience this guy like just take the user manual like it would be if somebody took all the USB cables for my controllers like they didn't really intend to do me monetary harm they just wanted to fuck me oh over. no 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 you're, you're missing can't... the initial step he broke the window to get in so <laughs> yeah. he actually did monetary damage by like yeah. fucking up his window <laughs> and then just took a fucking manual I can't remember the last time I looked at. A car, a car manual. Um, I did with the truck the first time I was getting an oil change because I wanted to know how much oil I needed because I, I didn't know actually how much oil the truck held. Which I did is once a lot. to replace the bag. Yeah, I bet it is a lot. Uh, oh, if you oh yeah, yeah, especially if it's an older car and the fucking yeah. um the cat or not the cat, but the lid doesn't have it written on it anymore. Yep, mm. yep, it was exactly that. It was my 1994 Dodge Shadow, baby. Oh, Ooh. dude, shadows are so fucking nice. I don't care. Anyone I, says. I love, love those. my car. It, okay, anytime it got over 50 miles per hour, it vibrated like <laughs> one of those goddamn massage chairs at the mall. But nice. Jesus Christ, see, I love that car. If you it would have the... gotten into a car wreck, I would have been just smothered, severed everything. It would have been smothered, awful. covered. Oh, okay, chunks. okay. We had different experiences. Exactly. You had the four cylinder, didn't you? Yeah. I had a six cylinder in mine. <laughs> my thing fucking scooted, which is bad for me because I have a lead foot anyway, but it scooted. Protrick says I read mine cover to cover a week or so ago. No, he didn't. Uh, he just got a out. new car, I believe. So there's you, a good chance that he probably every did. single word on that thing. Actually, you didn't read it all. Actually, if you, you read did, the important that's bits, impressive. you read the important bits. Well, I mean, you know. usually you don't need to read the manual to figure out where the gas pedal is, but I get it. It doesn't Gotta hurt to double check. If, if it never you, hurts to double check. If you do, you might not want to drive. <laughs> Just going to call that out. But yeah, driving. Fuck that. Whole lot of it lately. Hmm. And now it's awesome because we jump between Bradford and Dayton. And all of a sudden driving or Bradford and Columbus. All of a sudden that drive to Columbus feels like a drop in the fucking bucket. <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh it's just an hour and a half fuck let's do it yeah ah well anyway fellas yeah Does anyone have any good food want to get on i just got to realize that yeah it's a turkish anyone it's a anything turkish else food. um because the entire way across country yeah. we ate nothing but fucking fast food uh, i didn't even get to try the wendy's breakfast yet has anyone tried that yeah i had a breakfast baconator it was good I'm curious about they have the biscuit or the buttermilk chicken biscuit. Yeah, that's good too. Okay, okay, <laughs> it's all good. It's, it's, 
Bre- it, Wendy's it, it tastes as sucks. unhealthy as it sounds, and it also tastes really good. Okay, I, I there's there's a lot like, a lot of people liking that. You can eat you eat it, and you're like, this tastes really good, and it is horrible for my body, and you can just tell. It's just one of those things. Yeah. Dobby's calling out uh, both options, both the uh, breakfast baconator and the uh, fuck. What was the other one you guys said? Anyway, hmm? both honey, honey, butter, butter, chicken honey butter chicken biscuit. Yeah, both will make you feel bad about yourself. That's really what I want in a breakfast food product. I wake up, I look in the mirror, I feel awful about myself. I need to eat those feelings, so let's go to Wendy's. You see, to me, <laughs> breakfast is actually typically a, something where i like, okay, something kind of lightish. But if I'm eating out for breakfast, nah, man. No, 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 no. My, my morning go shot. Like American I, breakfast food is not known for being light. <laughs> no. no. It's some form of sandwich with sausage, egg, and cheese, or bacon even. but Or both which is always great because bacon actually tastes better, but sausage is way more filling. Well, the breakfast Baconator has both. Oh. In case you were wondering. That, that, that's, that's got me, man. That's got me. <laughs> I, I'm going to have to give that a shot. Project says apparently the coffee is good too. I, haven't, I didn't have their hot coffee, but I tried one of those, um, what do they call them? Frosty oh, Chinos or I whatever. I wanted one of those. How is it? It's good. It's, uh, it's just iced coffee with the mix they use to make Frosties. I mean, that just Ooh. sounds good. So, yeah, I'm in. Yeah. Kind of tastes like uh, frosty. Kind of tastes like coffee. It's not a... F- I don't think it's frozen. It wasn't frozen, though. All right. It's like just like an iced coffee. But and also, good. on the sneaky good coffees, um, Taco Bell. I actually kind of like their coffee. Really? And they also, ha- they also have a sneaky good breakfast with some of those items. Yeah, some so of it's good, I but I've never... I love Taco Bell breakfast. Uh, you, but I've not had their coffee. You just can't get the cheap items on their breakfast menu. That's it. If no. you get the cheap items, it's bad. I, the the crunch wrap, the breakfast crunch wraps are legit. Yes, they are. <laughs> okay, according to Proto Tricks, just in general, fast food breakfast fucks. <laughs> well, it's, you know? it's a sentiment I'm getting. <laughs> Cannot disagree with that. Fast food breakfast uh, does indeed fuck. Trying to think of a counter example, and I can't. So. Ooh. Must be true. I mean, the, even the one that people may not like, uh, Burger King, their cr- sandwiches are fucking rad. They also had the cinnamonies and those things. Oh, were good. God, yeah. When I was a kid, Burger King had these things called breakfast dude. buddies. It was it was like mini breakfast sandwiches, and we would get like four at a time. They were so fucking good. I don't know why they ever got rid of them. Probably because Burger King is literally the worst run company in the history Kruger of the United Bing. States. <laughs> and also, not call that I hate Burger quick. King or anything. Epoch, no Taco Bell in a year? That's hard, man. I love me some oh, Taco dude. Bell. Yeah, that would be tough. Your Taco body Bell. thanks you, though. The only time I've done extended no Taco Bells when I've done cross the board no fast food. If I'm eating fast food, I will have Taco Bell in my yeah. diet. And it doesn't affect me. Yeah, it doesn't. I saw a meme that said uh, <laughs> people that get diarrhea from Taco Bell are weak and their bloodlines are weak and their family <laughs> will be forgotten. <laughs> I love that. Oh, that is something I can't call food wise. Uh, For most people watching, this is no big deal. But for Tom, it's a big fuck you, buddy. Had Skyline twice already. Fuck you. Oh, by the (laughs) way, I just got eight cans in the mail. (laughs) (laughs) I can bring some back for you. A little cheaper, probably. That would be rad as fuck. We drove. So, I mean, it's not like we have to Uh, wait limits. Yeah, I will. Uh, I I will absolutely pay you. Just that don't get and pulled over again, fee. sir. What are you doing with yeah. <laughs> a warehouse? Sir, are you <laughs> smuggling Skyline? I'm gonna have are a you fucking smuggling, U-Haul trailer. Smuggling Cincinnati meat slurry. <laughs> God, meat slurry. That, that's a pretty good word for I it. Hate cinnamon that meat slurry. Even though it's so, uh, I hate so it. So I just uh, I just cashed out some stocks. So if you wanted to hook me up with some Skyline, you know, I'm good for it. Uh, wire me a couple thousand. I'll get you a U-Haul full. Nice. All right. Have you been that. to Lynn's yet since you've been back? No, I have not. That, that, that's on the list. <laughs> uh, we had Canes today, and that, that's nice. not as regional. Yeah. But we had some Canes, canes so pretty good. Lynn's like is on canes. the list of shit we have to hit. We even hit her hometown place at GNR, which has uh, fried bologna, which actually, people's oh, like, no. it's bologna. It's really, it. it's really high-end bologna. It's like 90% pork, custom recipe and everything to it. So mm. it's, it's really good bologna. Ooh. I'll tell you what I haven't had in a while that I've been wanting to to go back to is Yabos. 
Oh. We went just that one time, and now it's been, I don't even know how long it's been since we went there. There's that was a, so good. There's a good chance I end there uh, this week sometime. Oh, nice. Because, yeah, that, that place is legit. I even stopped getting the massive Yabo just because I wanted to not hate myself. Oh, come on. And their burritos Why good. would you go to Yabos if you don't hate yourself? Their the regular burritos are pretty fucking tasty, though. And yes, Epoch <laughs> loves fried bologna because he knows what's up. Fried bologna is the shit for all you naysayers. So. I've never had fried bologna. Have you ever had it. a fried hot dog? No, it's, it's, the not, same it's thing. not. I don't think it's quite the same just because texturally the bologna gets a little different. Yeah. And te- to me, texture is a lot of food. Like it's a very important element. I think we had that conversation on the podcast yeah. pretty recently. So about we texture. Get into it. Yeah. Ah. Oh. Speaking about podcast, fucking Tom doing all your instant coffee talk while I'm gone. So I can't call you out on your double standard. Fuck double you. standards. You You're know welcome. when to talk shit. I, I almost I almost actually made a, a G. What is that? G20, G2, something. Whatever the fuck my instant coffee is called from Vietnam. I almost made one of those before the show today, but uh, opted to do the ginger water instead. Yes. You should just get some Nescafe and call it quits. You should put some ginger oh, water dude. in your instant coffee. Bop. Oh, I'm bad. I wonder if ginger coffee could be good together. I don't I, know, it doesn't sound they, like it, but you would have to have a white two, roast. Yeah, they do two very different things for me. Like the ginger gives me that spicy. I want to like I want to fight the thing I'm drinking. <laughs> Coffee is more like a warm me up. I need to like bathe myself in this. Like let's have a really chill, wholesome morning. And ginger is just like the nah, fuck you. Let's get it, buddy. This is real life. <laughs> And it's that's real actually, life and it burns. That's actually burns. really good as a caffeine substitute because it'll um it'll kind of give you that punch in the face without yeah, needing the caffeine. True. Make yep. it bubbly and make it bite. Yeah. But if you've got that caffeine dependence, so uh, no, it will not <laughs> no, <laughs> suffice. No, no. It, like if you're the kind of person that drinks a cu- or a whole pot of coffee and then goes to bed, yeah, that's not gonna suffice. I wish I could be one of those people. Yeah. Hell no, man. Because then coffee doesn't work when you need it. Yeah. And I need that shit a lot. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. That's, that's all I had. I don't think I have anything else important. Oh, except for one thing. I did have peanut butter whiskey. Oh, how was it? <laughs> oh, by the way. By the way. No, I just remember. <laughs> how was that not the thing you led with? Um, yeah, come well, on. <laughs> I, I literally just had what? that today. It was good, dude. Like, it was smooth. It tasted like Reese's Pieces in your mouth was a little bit. Was it smooth or chunky? It was smooth. <laughs> it was creamy. But no, it was it was really good. Huh. Um, I'm, I can... um, I'm surprised because what I imagined was that it would make the whiskey almost too dry. You know how you have like peanut butter and it just sucks the moisture out of everything? Uh, That's what I imagined it would do to the whiskey. Nice. But no. Um, it, it's really good. It. Have you ever had? Um, no, that's not even a good reference. Because I was gonna say it's like a red stag. The way it puts a flavor, it's a really strong flavor. Mm. But but okay. it's smoother. It's smoother than stag. Well, that's not. It's not, it's not hard, hard to do because you're talking Jim Beam. <laughs> I mean, Jim Beam, your, your chest hairs grow as you're smelling it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, oh, I'm so hairy. What happened? <laughs> but no, um, it was it was pretty good. I could actually imagine spiking some hot chocolate with that. Ooh, and think yeah. that would, I think that would be pretty pretty I tasty. Think you're onto something, Eric. Do you pair it with a Reese's <laughs> Cup pie? Uh, so I was gonna pair it with some cheesecake, but we were running behind. Oh, okay. cheesecake! But no, that, I mean, I, this would absolutely be a dessert sipping whiskey. Like huh. you know how uh, some cultures do like dessert liqueur. I could yeah. see this filling that void. And also, I've realized I've been drinking liquor wrong my whole life. I guess you're supposed to. Chug. inhale like breathe in drink mm-hmm. it and then exhale yeah i was unaware of that was actually supposed to be the process with, and with holy good sh- liquor not with svedka and oh, no, not no, no, with no, jim no. beam or pop off <laughs> or anything like that As something that has a flavor you're supposed to enjoy that's what you're supposed yeah. to do and it really does it keeps the it keeps the burn of the alcohol away from your palate so you taste it more mm-hmm 
It, it's really, really good. I, I'm really happy. And it my also buddy gives you like that. that that deep scent of whatever it is. Um, yes. Which is you know most of tasting. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. A lot of people buy like special glasses just for that too. Where oh, it, like funnels up. Yeah. The, I forget what they're called. It, it almost Speaking looks of, like a snifter, but only for liquor. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of, um, I actually just picked up, and they're in the mailbox. I didn't have time to grab them before the show. Stainless steel whiskey stones, and uh, really, really like retro futuristic whiskey glasses. So Renee and I got on a kick last night. We were watching Star Trek, and we're like, why don't we have cups that look like this? Like, why don't we have the super cheesy, trying to be futuristic Star Trek cups for our liquor cabinet? There's literally no reason why we don't. So we went and we bought a bunch. And uh, this this pack comes with like this stupid looking, it, it's so fucking awesome, but this stupid looking whiskey glass along with stainless steel whiskey stones. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to complete the set and finish building 10 forward the bar in my house. I don't actually know of what you're talking about when it comes to yeah, the no glasses. Idea. Is it's this okay. actually a permanent fixture in Star Trek or is it just something you kind of saw and like, oh, that's really cool. Every time you go to the bar, like anytime anybody's having a drink, you you see like these glasses that are, they're clearly from like the late 80s, early 90s, but they're trying to be futuristic. It's like <laughs> something that is just trying way too hard to look like it's fancy and from the future and high tech. Um, and it makes absolutely no bearing, or no difference to the drink whatsoever. It just looks stupid as hell. And I love them. I love them so much. <laughs> Yeah. Predator so says I'll, I'll we need to, to see uh, them. You don't have one within yeah. arm's reach, do you? No. no down down is, uh, uh, like some of them get here next week. I've got one in the mailbox now that I need to go pick up after the show. Oh, okay. uh, but they will make an appearance next week because I'm going to have scotch in my new glasses with the stainless steel whiskey rocks. Whiskey so the nice metals. The nice thing about those whiskey rocks, let's say you have beer that's still not all the way chilled. Mm -hmm. Whiskey rocks don't melt. You could put whiskey rocks in a beer and not fuck with the taste. Now that said, uh -huh. it'll feel weird drinking it and feels like ice is hitting your face, mm. but you won't dilute the beer with them, which is nice. The, um, never, so never the company, thought of that. I looked at some reviews and, and searched on some subreddits and stuff, and people like whiskey stones, like the actual full soapstone ones, but they're just meant to like slightly cool an already cool whiskey. They're not meant as like an ice replacement, for instance. Yeah. Um, so somebody found this out, left a review, and uh, the, the guy who runs the company got in touch with him. And he said, hey, man, yeah, if this is just meant to, like, drop the temperature by, like, five degrees or something, if you want an ice replacement, here's, like, 80% off of our stainless steel ones. These will function as an ice replacement. And the guy was like, holy shit. So he tried it. You know, 80% off, why not? Um, and they, they're not that expensive to begin with. It was, like, 30 bucks for a giant, like, gift pack with glasses. Uh, so... I'll let you know how it works out. Uh, I, I really am looking forward to trying this out. Tonight. I prefer ice with my liquor, especially with like scotch and stuff. Cause then by the end, it kind of a little water is nice to kind of remove some of the bites sometimes, depending on what you're drinking. So I, I usually drink my whiskeys really cold, but because I like it really cold, I add too much water and it just, it fucks it up. It, it totally fucks it up. It over dilutes it. Oh, so yeah, what I'd like to much. do, yeah, it's just add a little bit of water, and then I'm going to use the whiskey stones to make it as cold as I want. Yeah, so you get the dilute that you want, and then you just keep it cold. Exactly. You hit the sweet spot. The sweet spot. Yeah, and I, I to the naysayers, I do drink some meat, but just in general, some things I feel it's a little better if you take a little bit of the edge off. I I do not like scotch neat i think scotch needs a little bit of water to open it up um i know there are some who disagree with me but uh i think i think like just just a smidge just a few drops of water to help open up that scotch it's gonna be necessary i think I got i'm in the camp of i don't care how anybody drinks their yeah. stuff however they like to drink it is mm -hmm. fine yeah. And we like to give Eric a lot of flack for the instant coffee thing, 
but no, no, that's I really exception. don't care. That's the only <laughs> that's thing that's the exception. Wrong. No, I really don't care. It's it's. <laughs> No, no, because it's fundamentally superior because it's quick, it's easy, and I don't have to have a full pot if I don't want it. So, there. so uh, there. one, one thing <laughs> you might want to try is the uh, is the AeroPress because I get good, you know, good coffee. I grind it myself. You don't have to. You can use ground coffee, and it will make a cup at a time. Except yeah, it's not I'll... instant coffee, so it's good. You yeah, already have I... a Keurig machine, don't you? Yeah, but I get my coffee in sixty seconds. Eric, you have a Keurig machine? Yeah. Honestly, the biggest difference you could make is just to grind beans right before. And you can still use it in a Keurig with one of those uh, yeah, reusable yeah. things. It's That's just, the, the biggest thing that'll make a difference, I think. Instant it's coffee the, is just so the easy. Fresh, the fresh ground bean is the most it important. It's the more important the than the brewing method. It's more important than yep. the water temperature. It's more important than the brand you buy, honestly. The fresh grind is by far the most important. I know, I know, but fuck it. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, games. Games. <laughs> games? Games. I played a game no, I want to talk whiskey week. more. Enough whiskey. Games. Games. Unless you have new whiskey. You have new whiskey? So I played Super whiskey O Brothers the other night. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty great. That, that'd be awesome if there was actually some <laughs> terrible fucking ripoff. I don't even we know what it would one. be. The pipes are just it. like for stills. Instead <laughs> yep. of going into the underground, you go into a still and you're cleaning it or something. Ugh. But yeah. Oh, I missed that. Um, video games. I haven't been doing a whole lot, but I will say this. Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing. I, I'm back in because I'm really <laughs> focused on breeding my flowers now. And I figured out that I have actually have all the tulips I need, so now I can just let them multiply by doing a one in nine method. Where you do a three by three grid and just plant the flower you want in the middle, and it'll just reproduce on its own. So I can just get all the purple tulips I want now. You know, I so fucking love Animal Crossing so much because, like, you're going at this hardcore, you're in it, you're just like, yeah, man, I'm breeding all these fucking tulips and shit. <laughs> Like, it is so goddamn hardcore and just like, yeah, I'm going to get all those rare flowers. They're going to be fucking colorful and shit. And it's just goddamn great. Because it's beautiful. I want to make my it's island wonderful. look cool. I want to make my island look cool. And to make it look cool, I want some of these I, cool looking flowers. Oh, trust me. No, I get it. Like, I'm not making fun of you at all. That's This is one of the best things about Animal Crossing is that people can get hyped for like, Oh no, man! I got the painted froggy chair, and it's like the, <laughs> so the froggy painted. chair. Painted? Oh my god! <laughs> or when you get some uh, recipes that you don't even know exist. Like if you don't yeah. go online and look up what all's available, some of the shit you get for recipes will just shock the shit out of you. Yeah. So, so I saw an Animal Crossing meme today, but I don't play, so I'm gonna run it by you guys, and you can tell me how funny it is. Okay. I guess it wasn't really so much a meme, but it was a thing that said, I have an idea for a new uh, NPC in Animal Crossing. It's um, like, I guess there was a character called CJ or something that might stop by every once in a while or, or something like that. It'd be like one of those, but it's a dog and he's looking for the old fossils that you have left over for his collection. And it's heavily implied that he wants them because dogs like bones. <laughs> that sounds like that something the game great. would do. That really sounds like something the game would do. Yeah, it does. They lean into all sorts of tropes like that. Except for Blathers. Blathers pisses me off. I love Blathers. I like Blathers the name Blathers. So much. A fucking owl that's afraid of insects. Or bugs, I, I should say. I love say. that it makes you so mad. I really do. <laughs> that and the fact that... Oh, I won't get into it. But yeah, yeah, that one gets me. <laughs> but um, a You don't Pro like Tricks. any Blathers on? <laughs> <laughs> I, I've got to ask uh, Predatrix about uh, this flower mini game inside the tulip mini game or the turnip mini game. Unless you're saying that turnips is actually what the game is, I want to make sure that you're making a joke and that I'm not actually missing something with flowers here. Because I think he might just be making a joke about the fact that the game is all about turnips. It, it is all about a stock market thing, but even like on the GameCube, I never got into the stock market. Yeah, okay, he's just saying the talk. But um, I stopped doing them. Like, I have 50 mil po or 5 mil positive. I don't need more cash. I'll get all my cash from doing other stuff. 
That way, if I don't sign on Sunday morning, it's not a big deal. Or if I don't lose a couple million. Frederick says Animal Crossing is turnip game. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, it, it, it is until you pay off all the money and then you realize that you don't have nearly as much need for money. And then it becomes essentially like a fashion league Ooh. where it's all about make your shit look pretty as hell. Get that five star island rating, baby. <laughs> Oh Good man, luck. I've seen some of the greatest things on the Animal Crossing subreddit. Somebody made uh, Michael's office from uh, from the office. Oh no, shit! They had, they had like like even custom textures applied to stuff to make it look right. It was really great. Somebody did a yellow brick road and then did like witch's legs sticking out from the corner of a house. It was fucking great. I'm a big fan of the Dan Lebatard show, which is a podcast for like ESPN, and they're very. Uh, Weird characters, let's just say that. They, uh, someone made their house the studio for the show with like all the art. They imported the art because they all have uh, <laughs> Levitard's brothers and artists. So he has his own very unique flavor of art. They recreated all of that, put it on the walls, put all the jerseys in the game that they actually have, made the characters look like him. I'm like, it was all fucking out and it was <laughs> awesome. Protodrix calling That's out Prison cool. Mike is my island flag. That is fucking <laughs> great. It's amazing. Prison I Mike Prison was one Mike of the so much one of the best characters to happen in the office. Yes, by far. That and when the he did the uh, fake Dwight. Fake Dwight was pretty good. Fake Dwight was really good. <laughs> I, I do like Asian Jim though. Asian Jim is still a, a oh wait no solid that's what I was for I'm sorry that's what I was thinking of when you said that for some reason. Oh, when yeah, they Asian even Jim doctor amazing. the fucking up even picture. the photo yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so imagine good. if someone went that deep to fuck with you. Like, what would go on with your mind? Because, <laughs> I mean, at that level of depth, you probably start questioning your own sanity. At some point, you would, yeah. Don't because, you I mean, go like, hollow now. Boo. But no, it's boo. just... Also, oh, yeah, I've been watching a lot of Parks and Rec. That's a good show. That's um, a great show, actually. We started on season four, and we're, like, up to the second to last season. And it's just something we've been watching. You at night. started on season four. We've already seen the show. Oh, we just, I mean, I'm not going to start a season one. Cause season one's trash. Well, season one's That's not, not as, good. as good. Yeah. I actually but, bounced off of parks and rec because of season one. Did you ever pick it back up? Nope. Missed oh, opportunity. Yeah. You need to watch it. It's, it's actually, worth I it. it's enjoy really it good. more than okay. the office. I think I do too. Okay. Now that's Ron? it. Like the office, the office got bad there at the end. Like so I, I actually bounced off right before Michael left, and I'm glad I did. I, I still have trouble watching some of those episodes because some of some of the later ones are just bad. Parks and Rec didn't finish off strong, but it wasn't awful. Um, it felt like they weren't expecting to get renewed or didn't pl- like they wanted the show to end. Ooh. But yeah, it, it's so good. They make fun of Amazon in it in a way that's kind of funny. Whew. Amazon and Google both. But yeah. Um, so other games. games. What have you guys been playing? I played a game Tom hates. What's that? Oh. I, I played Grease. Which oh, I thought was oh, I thought was I thought was Gree, but it's not Gree because it's a Spanish studio and Grease is also Spanish for gray. I thought okay. All right. Is, isn't this? I the, thought it was French for some reason. It is, looks French. Isn't this the artsy fartsy <laughs> game that everyone thought was right up Tom's alley and he bounced on? Yes. Okay. Yep. And I, artsy, I played fartsy it for game. like two hours and fucking hated it. Did you were like halfway done? <laughs> Honestly. Yeah, I know. But, um, I know. I couldn't uh, finish it. Like literally, every time I would try to play it, I fell asleep. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I mean, that I, was like, I, games I, I love artsy fartsy games. Like Dear Esther is one of my favorite games of all time, but this was. This wasn't even like pretentious enough to be good. I loved it. Really? Okay. I played it in one sitting. It took about three or four hours. Um, so I could, give me a crash course. I can't remember exactly what the print, uh, press, like what the game is. Uh, the, I guess, narrative of the story is it's basically just about loss and grief and coping. Okay. And it's a whole, basically everything seems to be kind of uh, 
I mean, it's all metaphorical, right? There's no specific narrative. It's not this specific character died and these events happen and this is how this character is dealing with it. It's more of like, it seems more in a broad sense, like a, vis a visualization of the, the feelings and steps that somebody would go through um, during those times. Okay. So the most criticism the game got is definitely gameplay because it's very easy. Um, is there it's, gameplay? Yeah, there's gameplay. Okay. Uh, I always, have to, I always well, have to ask when it sees yeah. some of these artsy yeah. pretentious games. I'll, I'll Dear Esther hate, has I, no gameplay. You walk. Yeah. And a lot of people, I mean, people might call it a walking simulator. You know, all you do is hold W the whole time, and that's not fair. It's a 2D game. You hold D the whole time. Uh, but no, <laughs> but no, it's a, it's actually it's actually not a walking simulator either. There's actually platforming gameplay and some really light puzzles. Um, but it's it's very easy. There's no fail state, um, which is very intentional. Like you, there's no. Uh, it, it's hard to say. There's I don't want to say there's no gameplay, but there's it's not very game e right. Like you're, you're basically you have to collect these little orbs on the map to unlock the thing to the new the next part of the map and then you get abilities as you go on that change how you move around and stuff it's not there to be a game it's there to be more of a statement slash story uh, kind of thing i'm guessing yeah it's it's more of a it's really it it only exists to show off the art that's it and and uh, i have to no, say like i, I will think admit, so. the the art style is gorgeous it's, it's absolutely beautiful like you could take a still screen of almost any moment in the game and make a really nice desktop wallpaper out of it. Like oh, it's really? all yeah. it's all very it's pretty. The soundtrack, the soundtrack beautiful. is amazing. I've listened to the soundtrack probably ten times since I played it. Um, Prototrix asked which game is this? It's Greece or Gree, however, whatever. G R I S. G R R I S. Um, it's definitely not for everybody though, because there are some things about it that if you're expecting like. A hollow knight or a braid or a shovel knight or like a, a combat focused or heavy puzzle platformer you're not going to get that you're basically it keeps you busy enough and engaged enough i thought um to be something that you can just relax and play and really take in the imagery and the the sounds and the emotion that the game is trying to uh, convey which i thought they did very well um it definitely I don't know. I felt it. I felt it right here. Even though I, it, even though it's not a specific narrative, it it encapsulates the feeling in a way that I thought was really effective. It it was really really good. I'll probably play it again at some point. You know, years down the road or whatever. I might have to try it again. I just i I didn't get what I wanted from the narrative strong enough to keep me playing that game. Yeah, and that, it's that very, was my it, biggest issue with it. It's very abstract, and and the narrative it's telling is a very simple. Uh, I don't want to call it a story. Almost like it's kind of a story, but it's like the if you boil down what a story is at its very core element, it's basically that. It's it's more about the concept of what the story is than a, a specific narrative, I guess. Okay, it's about loss and dealing with the loss of somebody. Um, I watched a video after I played it because anytime I play a game, I, I usually look up videos after I play it to see what I missed, right? And I guess a lot of the game's stages kind of revolve around the five stages of grief. So um, that's kind of cool. Which are what? Anger, denial, bargaining, depression, and acceptance, and probably mm -hmm. in the wrong order. But um, each stage seems to represent one of those things. And Kind of the the main visual gimmick at the beginning of the, or throughout the whole game is how it deals with the colors of the game. So at mm -hmm. the very beginning, it's all in black and white. And then you get to a certain part of the stage and then it introduces red. And then you get to another stage and then it introduces green. So you have green and red. And it goes through until you get through all of them. And, and Do you end up in full color? Yeah. But I just thought the whole game was just absolutely beautiful, not just visually, but conceptually. And I, I it really... I don't know, resonated with me and didn't with Tom, and I can completely understand why. It uh, it got a lot of awards. Like, yeah, don't don't let my opinions ever stop you from playing a game that you think you'll like. 
Uh, yeah, I, you'll, you'll miss out like, on some good games. <laughs> <laughs> I I am absolutely a fan of those artsy fartsy games, and this one just did not connect. And see all. that that blows my mind because, like, to me, the there's a cross section of artsy fartsy narrative and gameplay, and I think Braid was the perfect intersection to me. Yeah. And anything more on the artsy spectrum tends to start dipping out for me, and I know it gets into you territory. So yeah. to me, like I would have sworn this would have been right up your fucking alley. Well, there like, are different, gone there are home, different types. Dear Esther, the quote walking simulators. I fucking eat that shit up. I love those games. If you can call them games. Yeah. Well, those games also have like very defined narratives and stories too. Like it's more yeah. specific. Yeah. This is more on the lines all along the lines of like if you're gonna like this game, you have to be somebody that could go to an art gallery and just look at art and enjoy it. For one, its entire narrative is kind of like the subliminal mess or narrative to Hellblade. Is that kind of fair uh, to say where it's more of a con or of a process or something like that? I mean, yeah. Hellblade was one big giant metaphor, but it had more defined events. Yeah. Like yeah. even even the things that happen during the game that they show you is all pretty abstract. Okay. Um, so. So Predatrix calls out, he just listens to the opposite of what I say, which is actually a great way to buy games. <laughs> That's like, a great way to live life. Yeah, if you do the opposite of everything I do, you're probably in a pretty good spot. Yeah. yeah. So I, I've been thinking about this game a lot this week because I knew I would have to talk about it and I have to like put put what I think about it into words, which is kind of weird because of the nature of the game. So, So imagine you want to make a sad song, right? What okay. would be the first thing you do? You write sad lyrics about a subject matter that's very sad. But you can make sad instrumental music without any words at all because it doesn't it's not necessarily about what it's saying, it's it's about the feeling. So, you know, you can put in a violin and a piano at a slow tempo, you know, playing at a minor key, and you can you can give that feeling of sadness without having a story that makes the sadness, right? Yeah. So the opening of The Last of Us is incredibly sad because of what happens, and you can re you can put yourself in that position or whatever, and obviously it's devastatingly sad. That that scene is horrible. But this is more of like trying to conjure that feeling without necessarily putting you in a position. It, it's like there's less circumstance for the feeling, and more so a representation of the feeling. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it makes sense. It's I can see where something like this would be hard to put into words, though. Yeah. It's more of a you just have to experience it. Yeah. But I think it was just it was well put together enough with the the visuals and the, the music and stuff, which I think was very key for a game like this. You have to have that visual and audio element to it to pull it off, I think. So hats off to the the art designers and stuff too. Like not just the fidelity of the art, but like the actual design of the art is, is gorgeous. All right. Makes yeah. sense. I, as far as like I, I art it. style, music, colors, the, the actual graphics, the drawing, everything. There's nothing about that game that isn't fucking gorgeous. Mm -hmm. It's sad. It has, it has like triumphant moments. It has kind of dark stuff. Not a lot, but I don't know. It's just it was great. It was great. Now there is a part that I I saw got a lot of criticism. Is you're being chased by something, and you like like in a normal game it would be a boss fight or a chase sequence, right? And then if you don't do the thing, then you die or you have to start over. And it the game basically takes control over your character to where you don't have to do anything. And a lot of people had issue with that. But does it eventually get through or does it just give you unlimited tries essentially? No, like it you can't there's no fail state at all. Okay. The well, game will not stop. Well, I mean like there's stuff <clears> where <throat> like in Gears of War I remember this is something I fucked around with to make a point. There's a sequence with the planes real low and you have to hurry up and do this so that the plane doesn't get shot down. If you don't move Nothing happens. The plane doesn't get shot down. You don't die. It literally is just putting this false rush around you so that you feel stress. Mm -hmm. But if you don't do anything, nothing happens. So is it the that avalanche or, in Sonic um, Adventure. No, you can set your controller down and it's a cutscene. 
Oh, that's how it works. oh yeah. okay. Which you I could got just to think of it. Part. You could just think of it as a cutscene. Like I don't understand the issue there. It's a cutscene. It's because it doesn't, you get a it doesn't very look like a cutscene. It, you get a very small control of your character anyway during that part. Like I tried moving the analog stick around and stuff. You could only move a little bit. Like you couldn't even necessarily move enough to like dodge or whatever you would need to do if you were in actual danger. I, I think the but issue is the is the messed up expectations. Because Green exactly. up until that point didn't have like quote traditional cutscenes, right? Like, there were little things that showed you certain things happening in the world, right? Like, unlocking a new, a new color or whatever happens, like, at the at the end of the stage with crumbling or anything else. I'm trying to mm-hmm. avoid spoilers. Yeah. Um, but it didn't actually have cutscenes. Now, this cutscene looks exactly like gameplay. The fact that they give you a little bit of control means mm-hmm. that, yeah, hey, look, it's, it's a video game. Except yeah. it's not. The game's not very it's gamey. Gameplay. So anybody that's coming into it expecting like a a, a fun gameplay experience, it's not going to be it. It's a get fuck kids kind of scenario. Kind of, yeah. yeah. Which I, I have no problem with. I mean, I shouldn't say it that way. If a game designer wants that, I don't see that as being an issue in the game. Mm-hmm. Like to me as a whole, the whole game's an issue. But in general, if you're going to do that, I don't think it's a bad thing. And honestly, it's been something that's happened in games for a long fucking time. Looking at you, Sonic. But yeah, yep. stuff like that has happened a lot. Uh, but anyway, you also played something else that I'm, or Tom was talking about. Yeah. That shocks I, me for you. Yeah, exactly. I, um, I, I took one out of Tom's playbook last week. Uh, he was telling us about Forza... Um, Horizon Forza? Four? Forza Four Horizon. Was it Forza Horizon Four or Horizon? Or Forza. I thought it was just Forza, 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 Horizon, Forza Horizon, Horizon Four. Horizon, Horizon one four. of those. All right. Yeah, that one. That one. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know the way he was describing it. It sounded fun, and I hadn't played a racing game in a while. I'm not really a racing game guy. Uh, when I was a kid, I liked them. I played a lot of the Need for Speed games and stuff like that, but I never got real into it, and I haven't really played any modern racing games. Um. Unless like Grand Theft Auto counts, but no. that's not really. There's cars, but it's not that much of a racing game or anything. I mean, they have some of their online. Yeah, yeah not really. Um, but man, I played it just on a whim, just to see if I would like it or whatever. And I know that racing games have really, really nice graphics these days, uh, especially with the actual car models and stuff. Like, yeah, it's ridiculous. So I just, I just wanted to try it out, boot it up, whatever, test the system out. And the way Tom described it last Scored. week made it sound fun, more fun than most games would, most racing games sounded like they would be. So I played it and I played it like most of the day yesterday. I really? love it, actually. It's really, really good. So there's a few guys in nice. the community that have it. Did you play with anyone or were you solo? No, no I was just playing solo. Um, I will reiterate what Tom said last week. The intro to that game is perfect. It's it's the perfect opening. It's it's really really effective. Are you guys gonna make me get a game pass just so I can see how this game? It's opens? a dollar, I, Eric. Yeah, uh, to be completely legit, I I honestly struggle to find a game with a better opening. Like Last of Us come is like the closest cold opening. I don't know if it's that good, but to. for a racing game, it is it's really effective. I, it's I I loved it. It it absolutely the way Last of Us conveyed like the mood of depression and hopelessness and fucked up in this that is real life 2020. Mm -hmm. Um, This game does it, but it makes you feel the exact opposite. It makes you feel like chill. You're happy. You're in control of the car. You're like everything that you're supposed to feel like a power trip racing game, road fantasy. This gives you right off the bat. Yeah. It tells you everything you need to know about the game in 10 minutes. Mm hmm. Yeah, I could definitely get it into that because also Horizon is the more arcadey of the Forzas, correct? That's like, why uh, I don't, I don't Dave, know anything about. Dave the series. was telling us it's kind of uh, like kind of a middle ground because that you can turn on or turn off a lot of the arcade like like steering and brake assistance and and all of that kind of stuff. Like you can turn that stuff off and turn off the HUD and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, the car tuning seems to be pretty in depth. 
Okay, um, Predatrix answered that for me, though, also. I was like, it is the arcadey part of the series. I'm not comparing it to other games. I'm comparing it to Forza itself. Like, Core Forza is a sim. Where this one sounds like you might be able to tune some of it that way, but out the box, it's not a sim. It's just a really good racing game. Yeah, probably. And you can... The difficulty sliders, like, you can <laughs> tune Forza Horizon 4 to be, you know... I. And basically have it drive the car for you as much as you want or as little as you want. And that's what I really like about it. So you can you can dial it up like, all right, well, are you really good at controlling, you know, cars on on mud or, you know, dirt tracks and cool. You can you can dial that stuff up for those. Mm -hmm. And then when you get to stuff like, you know, drifting or, or certain road races or hazardous conditions. All right, let's let's go ahead and dial that back down to the arcadey side. And uh, yeah, yeah, we'll be good there. Yeah, Predatrix points out you're not getting R Factor uh, Project Cars 2 iRacing sim experience. Oh, yeah, it's not that much. It's not, not no. that kind of. It's a not sim. the arm of racing games for sure. I, I'm putting it in the sim of like Gran Turismo kind of sim, not the actual like fucking race simulators that people. Yeah. Run it's not need for speed. Right? Not, it's not, not need F1 for speed. Professional but it's drivers also, <laughs> using this instead of uh, you know actually racing. It's not Project Cars, but it's also not Need for Speed necessarily. But I mean, Horizon's not even Need for Speed, though. Yeah, that that's shit I mean. almost borderline stopped being racing games. Like uh, Mario Kart may have been a more <laughs> uh, sophisticated racing game than some of the Need for Speeds got. Yeah, but no, it, it's really good. The way they present the the story mode and stuff is exactly what I needed to make a racing game more interesting for me. Like it's not just all right, stage two, do this circuit, and all right, stage three, select it from a menu. Like you're going. You've got this open world map. You're going to parts on the map. You can choose which races you want to do and which ones you won't. You know, gather this many renowned points or whatever it is uh, to advance to the next stage or to the next part of the world, which, by the way, is the seasons, which is really cool. Mm. So you start off, um, I think you start off in summer or autumn. I can't remember. Uh, summer. Summer. And then you go to autumn. Yeah, summer, autumn, and winter. Um, but yeah, you, you play through the map a little bit. There's like one of them, you're a stunt driver for a movie. It's a little thing like that. You've got road courses, you've got dirt tracks, you've got later on you get to like ice and snow and stuff, but it's really cool. Like you've got this open world with a bunch of stuff to do. There's like collectible ish kind of stuff. There's hidden barns with classic cars that you can unlock. And, um, there's just enough into it that, that keeps it really interesting for somebody that's like me, who is definitely a casual and when not in the story, if I remember right from hearing, the seasons actually switch in the game. Yes. Even for non-story. And the cars oh. handle differently. Oh, okay. That said, so I've I never think, played. but I think we should try out the multiplayer. Like, I really, really want to see what the multiplayer is like for that game. I, I, will, I will say when I'm, when I'm racing in single player, it's showing all of your guys' names. That's <laughs> my opponents. Oh, really? Yeah, it's kind of cool. I wonder if there's actually something you do where you're racing ghosts of your friends. I tried to it see might that, be. But it I don't know. It didn't look I'd probably like that. not because the AI is going to have to adapt. Like, well, the yeah. AI has to react to how you're driving too. Well, I just mean yeah. in general, like actual, like if there's a way to race I'm, your friends. Ghosts. I'm sure there is. Yeah, there's no way they'd not put that in. Because I always um, um, stupid. I always loved that about Mario Kart, the ghost racing for yeah. the high high speeds and stuff. Or yeah, you know what I'm saying. High scores. Mm -hmm. But I, I do like the has the DLC situation. Um, honestly, I don't know. Um, I know you can buy car packs and stuff. Like certain cars are only DLC purchasable. Are the ones you unlock with points in game. But, can, uh, do you have to buy it? No. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Sorry. Let me see. Is it possible to buy it with in-game currency? I don't think or so. I think they were like DLC introduced after. Okay. Because kind of like I'm wondering, like okay, Rainbow Six, yes, you can buy the operators by cash, or you could play a fuck ton and get them. I don't think so. Okay. You you can play and get the other cars, but not not the DLC ones, as far as I know. I fucked up. I accidentally pulled the pad off my thumbstick, and now I'm trying to put it back on. Oh no! <laughs> but no, I like the combination of the open world and the the seasons thing because you play through the story a little bit and then the season switches and you're playing through the same open world but in a completely different visual style and it's really cool and it's gorgeous 
and what I did, I, I don't play it with headphones on. I play it with my speakers I've got in front of me. You can't see them. Uh, they're like decent speakers. So I turn it up really loud and I just sit here and it's like, it's, it really adds to it. It's cool. Nice. Oh shit. I can't get this thing back on. That sucks. Whoopsie. What are you going to do? You need another controller? No, nah, no, nah, I'll just, I'll run it. I, I got I have this shit. another. It's right in front of me. Yeah. The A button's a little spongy, but you know, it's no an worries. Xbox controller. Ah, well, so in other words, I'm hearing Forza, I should pay a dollar and play it. Yep. Yeah, I don't see why not. Also, my uh, when I went to download it the first time after Tom said that, I went to download it and realized my Game Pass expired, and it let me renew for a dollar again. Really? Ooh. Which is surprising. Usually that's only the first, you know, whatever month. And then it's supposed to be like a dollar, and then what, five ninety nine after that or something? It's really yeah, cheap. Yeah, it's supposed to be like five or six a month. Yeah. So it comes out so- to be a price of a game a year. Dave is asking survival games ever. Uh, for me personally, probably not. Um, I bounced super hard off of the survival crafting genre, so much so that if a game even has those options in it, like Last of Us, they have a really extremely light crafting system. I hated that. I really did. Um, I, I love them. And I, um, I, I just can't get into it now. Dave was playing, or sorry, Epoch. Uh, I don't know how we went to, uh, I fucked it up. Either way, he was playing one <laughs> on stream. Um, it was recently, I don't want to say recently released, but they recently did some stuff. He was playing it. It looked good. Like you would make a car and you would custom build the car how you want. Like you put on the motor, you put on the wheels and stuff, but you make the body of that car what the fuck you want. So that was really fucking cool. And I was really intrigued. It's a crafting system where you kind of have liberty to make it how you want it, which is kind of fresh to me. Scrap mechanic. Yeah, there it is. Scrap mechanic. And it looks pretty. It's a really pretty game to look at. It's not the newest of new, but it's only a couple years old, I think, or something like that. So when I get back into Washington, I am looking to try that game out. I think the closest thing to a survival game that I can probably get into is like... Terraria. Terraria, yeah, Terraria. Speaking of, we do need to start a server up. I was, yeah, I was going to bring that yeah. up. With the newest update. I did, I did install it finally, so. Yeah, I, I heard you guys talking about that. Uh, what, what are they calling it? The last ever? Uh, or? Journey's End. Journey's End. Which puts a sad heart, a sad spot in my heart. Like, my first place I lived in Columbus, I remember playing that on 360, a shit ton. Like, that, that game is a special place in my heart, because that, yeah. that's a long We put a lot of time game. into that. Yeah. Relatively. Yeah, maybe not to not to Rocket League Rocket standards. League standards now, but <laughs> at the time that was a lot of hours <laughs> for to, me. To non Rocket League games in non Dota, I, I put both of those in the same fucked up category. I think Terraria um, and Factorio are probably two of my longer played games. So, like, you take out the lifestyle games, crafting games are pro- games with crafting systems are probably up there for me. Well, for they're inherently most played. pretty time consuming too in nature Mm -hmm. and i enjoy having some a tree to work through like i enjoy that about rts's and stuff like that building through the tech trees yeah i like that about terraria getting to a new area that where you can actually access a certain kind of material so that you can get better armor and stuff yeah you can get a better pick which allows you to mine better shit yeah and not die from the shit that's there 2016 it came out okay 2016 was scrap mechanic came out okay uh, but yeah, um, trying to think. Oh, I did play one other game. What'd you play? Hack and Slash. I've played it before on stream way back, like 2016, I think. Um, I went back to it for a little bit because I'm like, I'm on a laptop. I don't want to run something beefy. That game was interesting. Still, it's pretty fun. The whole idea of like everything is software and you can program NPCs to be friendly, foe, their walking patterns, their damage, their speed, all that kind of stuff. And Dobby calls out, there's a game called Dice Throne that I played. It was a board game. Um, I should call this out real quick. It's Yahtzee meets D&D, maybe. d and is probably not the right term, but you roll five dice. And at the outcome of the five dice roll, you have like three different symbols you could have shown. And that says what attack you just formed. 
and then you can dice re-roll. Is really cool. And you can re-roll that very Yahtzee style to try to get the spell you want or the attack you want. It was, it was a really, really rad uh, tabletop game. If you like that, it's really, really fucking cool. And then also, for the first time ever, I played um, uh, Catan. So yeah, I've been doing a lot more board games right now <laughs> than um, uh, video games. Board games can be fun, though. Yeah, I, I think uh, the cross-section of people who play a shit ton of video games and people who appreciate board games is a pretty broad spectrum. Yeah, I'd say so. Like, it's not going to be your um, guy who just plays COD and Madden. That that cross section is probably a little smaller. It it depends on the board game for me. So something like, I, I have mad respect for it, but something like Twilight Imperium, where you're looking at a two-hour setup time minimum, you're looking at 20 hours of YouTube tutorials to understand the base rules of the oh, game. Oh, yeah. No. The game itself will last four turns and only four turns. Which, by the way, that constitutes eight hours of play. Uh, and then you've got the two-hour teardown. Not super, super into that. I did those a lot back in Ohio. Not not really looking for it anymore. I like those. I, 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 I am not a stranger to games that take a long time to play. You guys played Hero Escape. Hero Escape is one <laughs> of the games I loved. And if you play it with people that are new, the drafting phase alone can take like two hours. Because people don't know the characters. So they're reading through hundreds of character sheets to figure out what everything does. So, I mean, I, I'm not opposed to it. It's just I don't get a chance to do it much anymore. So when I get the chance, it's kind of nice. It's like, hey, yeah, these kind of games. Been a while. I prefer simple, easy to learn, easy to learn ones. I, I don't have anything against those. I enjoy Great. those just as much. But some of the more complex games allow for more, um, like, you can do what you want. Mm -hmm. They give you more liberty in the game yeah, of being able to do true. things. And you can link things cooler in more unique ways. Um, also, so. also, games with, like, kind of ambiguous, conflicting rules like Munchkin can, can, <laughs> can make Love for it. a lot of really entertain, entertaining banner uh, banter and, and arguments and stuff. <laughs> Any good tabletop game is ambiguous <laughs> when it comes to rules. There's some part of it that will be ambiguous. Yeah. Like the the game I was talking about, the Dice Throne, they had two very distinct different phrases that we just had to chalk up to meaning the same thing because the rule set did not address one of the ways they worded it. Uh. Unblockable damage versus unblockable attack. They didn't distinguish it in the rules so we didn't know if they were the same or not. So we just had to assume. Which, I mean, in that game, it makes a big difference because the defense can be offense in a really weird way. But yeah. Perchix brings up, we didn't play test this. Yes, that was fantastic when we played that. Yes. That was a good one. Um, if D20 is open, we need to do that. I know that would involve Proto Tricks making a drive, but suck it up. I've drove pretty damn long to be here. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> Tell, but, tell us how you really feel. We'll make everybody drive and meet it like Yabos and then <laughs> drive to D20. <laughs> uh, he has a car he has to break in. Yeah, do it. There you and go. Also, I don't know if we did talk about that. There was a mech update for No Man's Sky. That looked pretty fucking cool. Oh, I completely missed that. Yeah, I. that's a game I always have installed just because it's always fun to check out some of the stuff they've been doing because fuck, they do a lot. <laughs> Epoch also asked about the Wasteland update for Fallout 76. I didn't see that either. I tuned out 76 after the debacle of launch. Yeah. Yep. But then again, I'm also not a huge Fallout guy, so I admittedly did not follow Fallout 4 outside of the shitstorm that came up around it. Oh, well, fellas, any other games that we missed? Yes. Lots. Yeah, what else have you been playing, Tom? You usually have a very long list. This one is relatively short. Handleable, yeah. <clears throat> so uh playing some pavlov um it's uh it's cool going going from uh you know, playing csgo which i was doing this week to you know i feel like playing mirage and then you play your mirage and then you you go to uh you know you go to pavlov and you get the exact same maps and you're like okay well i i know that in csgo when i watched this sightline here i was blindsided here so in vr i'm just like like just peeking he can constantly to my left. It's like, all right, cool. And I, I don't have to like change my aim, right? Because it's in VR. So 
I'm aiming down this corridor. My buddy's got this angle covered here. So if he starts shooting, I know they're coming from this angle and they'll probably, you know, flank me over here. Mm -hmm. I am, I'm getting kind of tactical about it. And I really, really like the game. Uh, both CSGO and Pavlov are just great. Um, Beat Saber, I hit 130 hours in. Um, I've been I've been going nuts on some Beat Saber. Dude, I loved the, that Yoshi screaming <laughs> clip. <laughs> Yoshi screaming perfect. is the best song in Beat Saber. Bar none. That's amazing. 12 out of 10. Fantastic, dude. I'm going to put that on, on a playlist in Spotify. On Do repeat. It. Yoshi screaming for just, 10 hours YouTube video. Yeah, just keep keep it rolling. Just that's the only thing in the playlist. That's the only thing you need. I don't think I've seen um, that clip. So I've been uh, I've been practicing. I've been trying to get a little better. I, honestly, I've been streaming because if I stream Beat Saber, it keeps me doing it for longer. And I'm using this oh, as kind of my, yeah. my quarantine workout. Like, so, you wanna, I can't cut the stream now. It's only been 30 minutes exactly exactly i was just like ah well my arms are literally jello um <laughs> fuck all right so you wanted rap god we'll do rap god that's fine fucking assholes why are they making me do rap god and i realized <laughs> i signed this up or signed up for this myself is, uh, is that a really tough song i'm assuming <clears throat> yeah yeah so it's, not it's like eminem the song. eminem rapping basically as fast as he can um and every single word is a note. Okay. It's it's pretty great. I'm not going to lie. The, and the map itself is excellent. Uh, I, so I saw you doing some chop suey. That was fucking yep. insane. Wake up. 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 That, yeah, I, I like that map. That map was good, too. Um, there's uh, in Beat Saber, like you can have really mediocre songs. Um, but if the map is good, it just makes it worth it. And then, on the contrary, you can have absolute banger songs, and the map is shit. You'll never play it again. Like I, I have lots uh, of like great songs that are I consider some of my favorite songs of all time, and the map just doesn't do it justice. So I don't play it. That sucks. That's fair though. Yeah. Uh, Prototrix is asking what mod manager I'm using. Mod assistant. Um, it tends to be uh, a little bit better, a little bit easier to use than Beat Drop. Uh, Beat Drop is cool, but Mod Assistant's definitely faster and easier to use. One of them was having some server fucking issues when I was playing because it wasn't finding any songs, Beat Drop. which was frustrating. Beat Drop typically fucks up a lot, which is why I, I don't do Beat Drop most of the time. I have to see about getting the other one because that sucked. There was someone over trying it out and I couldn't really find songs because everything yeah. was like, nope, we can't find it. <clears throat> yeah. Um, let's see. So 130 hours in Beat Saber. I'm trying to hit, basically I'm trying to do top 100 in most of the songs that I come across. Um, I'm nowhere near that goal, but several I've got top 25, top 10, and I'm, I'm just working through it. Um, <clears throat> The one song, Saeed by Infected Mushroom. I try every single stream. <laughs> I only get about 10 minutes in. Uh, and Whoa. only 21 people in the world have completed it without no fail. Um, Wait, it's longer than 10 minutes? Yeah, I was it's, just about to ask. Minutes. Oh, sorry, sorry. I've only gotten two minutes into the seven-minute song. Okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm like, not that I don't know of any over 10-minute songs, but that's a long time to be playing a, a rhythm game song. Yeah, no yeah. shit. Most of the songs that I play in Beat Saber are three to four minutes, about that good for a run. Said is seven, and it doesn't, it's not like a lot of these will have like super high peaks and then you know, a good 45 seconds of lows so you can catch your breath, get into it a little better, you know, rest up, and uh -huh. then they hit you with the difficulty again. Nah, yeah. Said is a straight up goddamn sprint for seven fucking minutes. <sighs> it's an absolute banjo the whole time. I love the map. Absolute the map is great. The banger. song is great. Everything about it is great. It is just goddamn challenging. Awesome. So yeah. Uh, what else do you um, got? So the skylines we hit, Google Earth VR is just chill. I wanted to play something in VR, but I didn't really feel like playing a game last night, so I loaded up Google Earth VR and ran around Scotland for a little bit. Took a trip over to Tokyo, walked around, saw some subway stuff, looked at a bunch of Japanese vending machines. It was nice. just chill as fuck. It was great. Um, and I also beat Half-Life Alex on hard mode. 
Nice. Nice. Um, so I, I can say the game does not lose any impact. It was even better on the hard difficulty because it the battles felt a little rougher. I wish there were a very hard difficulty. I really do. Because even on hard mode, enemies don't hit hard enough. And the uh, there are just so many so many healing items everywhere in that game you never actually feel like you're in serious danger for very long which kind of sucks i i really i want like the dark souls of half-life alex <laughs> our game that's, being that's easy not what can, i got with hard mode a game being easy can take away from it yeah. and yeah. even if it's not easy i just mean in general like certain I, games I, just perf- just work so much better if there's a, a pretty substantial difficulty i bring horizon zero up dawn up a lot for this kind of aspect but uh the last of us was also like that. i was gonna if you didn't bring it up i was gonna bring up the last of us where the game feels different at harder difficulty it actually felt like a survival game you have to use yeah. mechanics that you can neglect at lower difficulties mm-hmm. you have to be more worrisome when you're doing certain actions yeah um, I, I i like that in the game so if, if you're used to VR games, especially if you're used to VR shooters or playing stuff like Pavlov every day, like I am, um, start out Half-Life Alex on hard mode. Um, it will make the game feel a bit more challenging and a bit more, dare I say, realistic, because you're not going to tank hits as easy as you will in medium. Um, still not quite as difficult as I'm looking for, but I'm sure there will be a mod sometime soon uh, to fix my gripes. Yeah, and it's a Valve game. There's always going to be mods. Yeah. They've um, always embraced it. So, uh, yeah, apparently um, the Valve Index is like nine weeks behind. Uh, so so our, our buddy Magic Dave just, just ordered an index. It's got to wait nine weeks for it to ship. Oh, man. I'm not surprised, given the state of the world. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of a lot of headsets are sold out right now. And even if I mean the factories are open right now, they've got to get through previous demand. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure the factories for that's punching those out aren't punching them out like car manufacturers punch out cars. Yeah. yeah. Also, while we're on this subject, I saw a Facebook ad for a scam site trying to sell vi- uh, indexes. What? Really? Yeah, it was a it was a sponsored Facebook ad. Um claiming that they actually had indexes in stock and they were selling for 20% off. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's so, shady. Uh, if anybody sure sees are. that, uh, don't fall for it. The site doesn't look like super good, but mm-hmm. like I could see people falling for it if they don't know any better. Yeah. But then again, the people that are going to spend $1,000 on a VR system probably know better. Yeah, I'd imagine that they're probably spending a thousand dollars. They want to get it from Valve themselves, mm-hmm. for or, like, for or from and stuff like that. You just got to ask yourself, "Hey, is this too good to be true?" Yeah, if it is, <laughs> probably is. Yeah, but I mean, like the people that that wouldn't know any better, um, like they're not going to be buying an index. They're going to be buying a Oculus Quest or something. Yeah. And honestly, a lot of people are raving on the quest saying it's where to go and it's what to do. Which, I mean, I get it. It's PC-less. It's not as the best VR experience you can get, but wireless and all that kind of stuff, that is something that is really nice. Like, the idea of Beat Saber wireless is really rad. Some of the other games are really rad. It's just it's not going to be able to do everything an index can. Yeah. So, oh. um, yeah, Prototrix is, is looking, so he's looking at getting an index for the better resolution. It is better resolution. It's better FOV. The FPS is honestly the biggest change there. Mm-hmm. Um, but the controllers are really the, the magic piece. Uh, the index controllers just seriously change the way you play. Um, um so for you, yeah. Prototrix, since you already have VR, upgrade your headset alone. If you're only doing it for DCS. Because yeah. that has ho toss and everything like that, so there's no reason to worry about getting the controllers for that. Even though I agree, the controllers are the money maker. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, I'm ho toss for DCS. Though I wonder how that would feel in pure VR. But yeah, that that would probably be a little odd. But anyway. Anyway. Um, I think at that point, unless you guys had something else that we 
you missed, uh, we're going on to some newsy news. I do some news? Yeah. The n- 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 news? The n- n- news. Um, so first one actually kind of shocks me. Uh, CD Projekt uh, becomes the most valuable company in Europe, gaming company in Europe. I guess I'm not aware of how what all gaming companies are in Europe, but well, I wouldn't have thought is... them be the most, because like Ubisoft, mm. Ubisoft's yeah. over there. So, I mean, that that just seems odd. Like, I wonder if there was... I haven't read the article. I've only seen, like, the headline. I wonder if there was some weird thing where Ubisoft was disqualified because they're multinational. Or they only do the revenue from the Ubisoft games that come out of... uh, What is it? Ubisoft... um, It's not France, but... Which company company did they take over? Like, Ubisoft isn't exactly fully independent, right? They've got... They have a lot of investors. They've got... They've got a lot of people to live up to and a lot of bills to pay. And CD Projekt Red is relatively unencumbered by those things. Yes, but overall value, Ubisoft has so many more assets as well. Yeah. I mean, I I wanted, I need to look into that further, but yeah. It's 99% Gwent. That's it. (laughs) But no, before, um, before this, who was the most valuable company? In Europe. Uh, that, I don't know. I would have to put money Ubisoft. I mean, I granted, yeah. I have a blind spot, but they're a monster. And we, we're all familiar with multiple games and franchises that they do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, a- Ask Creed alone makes makes more money Ask than Creed. God. <laughs> yeah, I'm calling it Ask Creed. They just announced a new one, didn't they? Like Vikings <clears throat> or something? Yep. I'm, I'm glad they slowed it down and it's not a yearly cadence anymore. Yeah. And they they had really good response to it, and I hope more companies. I was say, from follow. what I heard, the the last one actually got some pretty decent reviews. People liked it mm-hmm. overall. Yeah. Uh, okay. Other news: uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater One and Two will not have microtransactions. Hey. Dot dot dot. At launch. At launch. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. So the fact that they qualified it at launch is worrisome to me. Yeah, because uh, <clears throat> that means that they fully intend it or they're building a system to allow for it. And mm. we're not talking just DLC, but like microtransactions, man. Like, I don't want to pay for different wheels on my board or a different decal on my board. Like, that's going to be the kind of shit they do. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we'll see how they handle it. Yeah. And I... So to be clear, I'm not against getting like board packs that have like 20 different type of boards and these wheels and shit. I don't want to have to buy each individual wheel. Yeah. Which I I understand. It feels like an arbitrary line of why this, not that. And I'll give, I'll agree. It's arbitrary, Mm -hmm. but it just feels more natural to me and not as sleazy. So Dobby is asking who's the developer and publisher. So the developer are the same people that did the, uh, the crash bandicoot remake. Um, and they they are loved uh, by the community. And with the way they're treating the Tony Hawk franchise and the effort they are putting into this remake, people are already pretty hyped. Um, <clears throat> publisher is going to be Activision. So, yeah. Yeah. And that's, I think, what everyone was worried about with the microtransactions and why they made a comment because everyone saw, yeah. what, like, they retrofit microtransactions into Modern Warfare. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. the, the the remake, not, not not or not the re, the not the newest one, but the actual one that was Call of Duty Four re released. They oh. retrofit microtransactions into that. Of course. So if they're going to do it, they're going to do it. Just depends on what the microtransactions are. Like it kind of sucks, but I mean, I'm not going to be buying anything. Yeah. yeah pro- well, I, I, I don't want to really say depends. I won't be, but we'll see. I what just want to play Tony Hawk's Pro Skater One and Two. Like let's say let's say that they include like some some newer skaters who weren't there in Tony Hawk Pro Skater One and Two, like some modern faces, and they say, "Hey, see that. if you buy this, we're using their likeness. They're getting a cut of this money. You know, you are helping, uh, you know, helping fund and feed an independent skateboarder who's trying to make this their career. Cool, awesome. Let's do it. Like if I buy if I buy something like you know, Hurley shirts or or Birdhouse board packs or something like that." Mm-hmm. And they're gonna get a cut of that money. I don't see it as such a terrible thing, 
especially if they if they spin it that way. Like in the menus, if they say, hey, hey yo, X percent is going to this person or this skateboarding company for their licensing. All right. All right. Doesn't yeah. mean I'm going to buy everything, but I, I'm going to be way less pissed about that than if it's just, hey, you can buy the color blue for your wheels now for $7. <laughs> Hashtag Activision. But yeah, like, Dave, fuck that. Dave also calls out a very important thing also is even if it mm. is the individual ones, as long as they give you the ability to in-game earn them. Yeah. Rain, I, yeah. I call up Rainbow Six a lot for that because I like their style. They made it, ve- oh my God. <laughs> they made it very grindy, but you don't have to buy a single fucking operator. No, you don't have to. It's grindy. You can get them you, all. You get into the game, you're going to be pressured enough to do it, but. Like I bought my first like 15,000 renowned operator without spending real money. I got Mer- uh, Mira. So, I mean, it's, it's possible. And I, I like games that do that. Like, not everyone has the ability to just drop some cash. Yeah. So, let them, if they play the game and they're a dedicated player, reward them by letting them get some of the premium content. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. Uh, moving on. Moving on. Doom Internal will ditch the, whatever that anti-cheat the is bow. they're using the on bow. the next update. <clears throat> and also... Yeah, so- that leads me to ask, didn't they learn the lesson in 2016? Uh, so this is they, 2016 is why they added that. Um, so they didn't add anti-cheat fast enough and the multiplayer was just a haven for hackers and cheaters and wall hacks and everything else you can imagine. And a multiplayer that wasn't very good to begin with. So it just absolutely killed the game. Um, so they decided, all right, well, we're going to add anti-cheat. We're going to add Denuvo, which is like DRM-ish protection. We're going to do all these things around this, which absolutely tanked performance in a bunch of areas. They said it's not related, but that's why people got confused. Like, well, you added all this bullshit. Now I get 30 frames. What the fuck? <laughs> um, so Marty went on Reddit and, and again, just like he dropped with, with the fucking Mick Gordon stuff, just dropped a wall of text and said, hey, guys, we heard you. By the way, the performance drops are not related, but it looks like that because they went in in the same update. We're rolling that shit back. Sorry. And uh, we hear you. It's it's shitty. We're going to find another way to do this. So uh, next update, it's gone. We heard you. We're sorry. We're trying to make it better for for these reasons. We did these things and made these calls. And obviously you didn't like that. So we're going to listen to you. Um, I think you misunderstood what I meant by didn't they learn from 2016. What I meant was, who the fuck cares about Doom multiplayer? <laughs> <laughs> so the Doom Eternal Some people multiplayer do. is interesting because there is no death match. There is no classic multiplayer. It is two demons versus one Doom Slayer. It is a three-person only match that is the only multiplayer you get. That is it. So they're trying different things, and it seems kind of interesting. But, you know. I, I still what stand. I understand, it's not been super popular. It's like, in all honesty, The Last of Us. I love their multiplayer. No one cared. Yeah. <laughs> I love their multiplayer, but no one cared, man. You got to know. I mean, I get it. You feel you need it for a game complete. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> Tom, did you ever play the multiplayer for uh, Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater? Yes. <laughs> Is that That's another, another one of those would... games where... Like, it was simultaneously definitely was one not... of the coolest and one of the dumbest things I've ever played. <laughs> I had a good bit of fun with that one. But yeah, it's definitely one of those where it's it's not the focus. Nobody cares. It doesn't need to exist. Nah. Yeah. But it was fun anyway. That was in the <laughs> era of everyone felt that a single player game was not enough anymore and there had to be a mul- some kind of multiplayer. Mm-hmm. Wait, Which wait, is wait. weird because did, eventually... Did we ever exit that era? Well, no. I was going to say the era transitioned to do you need a single player? Yeah. <laughs> in a lot of games. <laughs> but yeah, um... So they're removing anti-cheat. Anti-cheats have been the buzz lately. Because yeah. who would have thought? Anti-cheats are hard to make. Well, yeah. Um, some other news. Uh, Kerbal Space Station 2. Uh, delayed until fall of next year. I'd rather them take their time, get it right. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first game's fucking great. If you've never played it, you really need to check it out sometime. Fun fucking game. Um, other name. Uh, Serious Sam 4. August of this year. Uh, kind of shocking, honestly, given yeah. <laughs> everything that's been going on. And when was the last actual, like, full-blown Serious Sam released? Uh, Serious Sam 3 came out a few years ago, I want to say. 
They actually had a VR version, which was pretty good. You see, for some considered. reason, the VR version made me think that the game wasn't f a fresh release. So I was just probably mistaken on that. Yeah, so they released one and two in VR. They they made engine changes to basically jump <clears throat> totally on the VR bandwagon, which is cool. So they immediately ported Serious Sam 1, Serious Sam 2, and Serious Sam 3 into the new VR engine. Uh, plus they gave you like a, um, basically a Serious Sam wave shooter, which was pretty nuts. Magic Dave and I had a time with that. Um, yeah, I remembered you guys playing that. It just didn't look enjoyable to me, but at the same time, you like wave shooters, man. That thing just sent shit at you <laughs> oh, with yeah. some yeah. monster guns. I have a deep love for the Serious Sam series because it knows what it is and it doesn't try to be anything different. Like, do you want to play a Doom clone where enemies are just going to spawn in and try to wreck you and you just have to survive and, you know, try to blow shit up with ridiculous weapons and cool, fun areas? Welcome to Serious Sam. It's Do you over. want, like, the worst fucking one-liners ever penned in a goddamn video game? Uh, Including <laughs> all that shit from the 90s? Yeah, it's there, too. Oh, I never it's did an, play a Serious Sam game. So, correct me They're if fun. I'm wrong. It's an over-the-top Doom with Duke Nukem uh, one-liners. Oh, it's, it's even worse than Duke Nukem one-liners. Because Duke had, like, some funny stuff very occasionally. This is all <laughs> cringe all the time. But guys, it is like there is so much cheese that goddamn, uh, goddamn skyline chili says, "Dude, aren't you layering it on a little thick there?" You you drew but, blank on that, didn't you? You but, fucking yeah, drew yeah, blank yeah, and yeah. then just went for skyline. But guys, Quiet. in in Duke Nukem, the the mm -hmm. cops are pigs. Get it? Get it? <laughs> like pigs? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I get it. Remember that time point, Duke point. Nukem Forever came out and we realized that Duke Nukem just doesn't age well? <laughs> ah, fun times. Yeah. Anyway, Tom, one of your favorite games is doing some stuff. Uh, yeah, so Gwent. Gwent is going to Steam. Which is kind of cool. Yeah, I saw that notification when I yeah. watched Steam the other day. And it's going to be cross-platform, so, which is good. Or by platform, yeah. it's... Like, still I mean, PC, it's always been but... cross-platform because it's well, a goddamn card game. Well, what I meant was like, <laughs> hey, you're you're crossed on PC. It's, I don't want to don't know how to say it. engine launcher cross launcher. Is that the way to yeah, say it? Yeah, cross launcher. Oh my but god! Yeah, that's, that's Wait a minute. Can we what? talk about that for what? a second? Are you in Need for Speed right now? <laughs> what, what the fuck is? He's that? actually playing Forza. Oh. <laughs> Did you not yeah, hear so... that? Uh, I've got the headphones on. I heard something, but I didn't quite hear what we it was. Dude, I, know where, some... <laughs> I know where you live. How in the fuck is that happening where you live? <laughs> you tell me, man. You Someone just me. died. <laughs> there's, I, I wish, take it there's not I a lot of room to get up to that died. speed where he is. So, yeah, there's this fucking asshole, and he's been doing it for the past three years, will go full goddamn Jeff Gordon speed racer <laughs> bullshit down a road where children regularly, regularly run out into the street. Now, I'm not saying the problem is eventually going to solve itself, but the problem is eventually going to solve itself. <laughs> and you live in an apartment, co apartment complex, very tight road, parking on both sides. Mm. It's yeah, God, this man. motherfucker wants to speed racer in a goddamn neighborhood full of kids. <laughs> yeah, hopefully a kid doesn't get caught in this crossfire. But if the dude flipped his car like seven or eight times and died in a giant explosion, I wouldn't feel bad. <laughs> man, you heard Jesus. it here first. Tom <laughs> hates people. Wait, 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 was that news? Do we have uh, to put that in the news <laughs> section? I don't know what kind of car because the fucker drives off too fast. Every time I run to the window, he's just gone. So this is a reoccurring thing. And it's always when I'm trying to go to sleep too. E Epoch says put down spikes. I'm about to put down dynamite. <laughs> so it's a little too close for you. Dobby, thank you for that clip. <laughs> thank you for that clip. <laughs> I haven't listened to it, but the title says it all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sweet shit. All right, we have one more uh, thing of news. Uh, PS Now reaches 2.2 million subscribers. People are liking it. Yeah. It's not quite Game Pass, but... Game Pass is just an absurd value. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. So PS Now solves something different for me because with yeah. Game Pass, and the thing I, I don't like about Game Pass, 
and the thing I love about Game Pass is that all the games are downloads. So to play Forza, mm-hmm. I had to wait for all 70 goddamn gigs yeah. to download before I could play it. But with PS Now, I'm just like, oh, look at this, this weird PS2 game that I heard about once in a Game Informer. Let's uh, let's check that out. Play. Yeah. You wait 10 seconds. You're in the game. Especially because of the, you could play console exclusives, exclusives mm. and stuff on PC that really, really adds to it. Yeah. Well, the same can be said with Game Pass. You have all the Xbox stuff now. True. Which I guess isn't really that much now that I think about it. Because fucking Microsoft <laughs> all, all this generation. Games. <laughs> Me and you guys will carry the conversation for just about five seconds if you could. Five seconds. We need to talk five, for five, five seconds. seconds. Um, yeah, Game Pass is awesome. You should get Game Pass for $1. Yeah. There's actually a lot of good titles on there. I think <clears throat> the Hollow Knight's on there. Uh, what are some of the big... The big names on Game Pass. Obviously, the Halo, Master Chief Collection, all the Gears games. I didn't realize they had Hollow Knight on there. Yeah, Hollow Knight's on there. Um, man, I'm trying to think. There's some heavy hitters on there. Uh, but yeah. Forza, obviously. Outer um, Worlds. PS Now. Ori in the Blind Outer Forest. Wilds. Oh, Outer Wilds. I, I got to play that still. Wait, Outer mm-hmm. Wilds is on there? Mm-hmm. Pretty oh, sure. I need, to, I need to install that. What am I doing? What am I doing with my life? But anyway, you fellas got anything else? Or I think we're pretty much tapped out. Yeah, I think that's it. I think we hit all the things. I'm sure there's some giant news thing that we forgot or missed, but. Yeah, yes, that's Epoch, more, out, Outer Worlds and Outer Wilds, I believe, are on Game Pass. Outer I Star. could be wrong. Yeah, it basically Outer Everything. All the Outers are outer here. Outer Wiggles. Outer War Turtle. So yeah, um, I think with that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's probably all we got for us this week. Bop. That's it. That's it. That's a wrap. Yeah. Oh, wait, we didn't even talk about... Hang on. Hold on. Guys. What? Not a wrap? What? Guys, we didn't talk about the Fusion Rocket League tournament. Oh what are my we doing? fucking God. God damn it. We're the I worst. knew we missed something oh, big. Oh, shit. Fuck. Why so, did we have this how? in the news? How? How did we... Well, I could tell you how. We were really fucking frantic at the end. We were. Yeah, we were trying to get all set up. Out of disarray. Not a normal cast. Sorry about that. But, (laughs) yeah, dude, um, our team kicked ass in the Fungin RL. uh, Fungin? Fungin? Fungin. 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 Um, No, no, I'm just making fun of myself for how fucking awful I made that hashtag in the tweet. But, no, uh, Fusion RL qualifier, dude. We we, uh, kicked ass. Yeah. A lot of ass. um, In the finals, we took out G2. We started off by taking out uh, Warriors International. But, dude, that G2 match, like, or, poof, that got me going. Down to a game five. So, for audio only listeners, all couple of you, um, if if you haven't heard us in a while, we haven't talked about it. We have a Rocket League team, a competitive Rocket League team, and they're doing pretty well. It's pretty cool. Yes, yes, they are. But yeah, um, it was uh, Warriors we took out, then Sonic, and then uh, G2. You know, yeah. number one NA, G2. G2. Number one in NA, G2. For the audio listeners, we are not the Rocket League team. No, 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 no. The, the, <laughs> no, host, no, no, no. the hosts are not the Rocket League team. We're doing that it thing where people Blaze. who are sports fans say we when they actually yeah. didn't do anything. Yes. It is It is Lion Blaze, Jacob, and Demo playing under 72-pin connector. So uh, yeah, we we are not the team. Disclaimer. As you can see, if you watch, as us you on can Twitch, see, we're not we that not good, good at this Rocket game. League. We are not that good at this game at all. But yeah, they uh, they whipped ass. And let's also talk about this tournament. What it is? Yeah, it's it's unique, super unique, it's su- fun. super fun to watch. <laughs> so it's going to be a bracket of one v one, a bracket of two v two, and a bracket of three v three. Each team enters one person for ones, a team of two for twos, and the full team plays for threes. You know, and it's a bracket of eight teams in each. Really fucking cool. The qualifier. Since, you know, you don't want to run three brackets for a qualifier, there was like 96 teams, and it was game one was a standard match. Game two was 2v2. Game three was 1v1. Game four was whoever was down in the series picked it. And game five was the other team. So you saw stuff all over the place. Like for us with Lion, we did a lot of 1v1s. Yeah. And he went 5-0 and in 1v1s. Yeah, 1v1s one, one one were key to our, our bracket wins for sure we, on, on that one. Undefeated in 1v1s and undefeated in 2v2s. Yeah. 
Guys were killing it. So, I mean, it was in in our standard matches with G2, we played them fucking tough 3v3. Like yeah. fucking G2, we played them tough. So, I mean, I'm looking forward to this tourney to see how it goes. Yeah. Very, I think very much looking forward to it. Um, Austin, I think first killer are pr- or probably or line and first killer probably the favorites for the ones. Mm-hmm. Twos, no clue because I don't think many teams actually chose two as what to play for their others. And then threes, I think we're still going to be seeing G2 as a favorite. Yeah. Or hold on. Did I say that? Yeah. yeah. But either way, not us for sure. <laughs> not our favorite. <laughs> yeah. That, that's, um, that, that's why I stopped myself, Scott. As soon as I said that, I'm like, no, that's not right. G2 is not in. Um, but yeah, it's going to be fucking rad. Uh should check it out. Uh, Memorial Day. If I the, believe right. Uh, Correct me if yeah, I'm wrong on that, fellas. The ones in the qualifier. Uh, with with seventy two PC his very own Lion Blaze, he murdered some fools. Oh my like, god, dude! Goddamn war crimes. <laughs> Seventeen to five, I think was one of them. Yeah, jeez, dude. And like, then another was... one was fifteen to four. Oh man, <clears throat> it was yeah, it, it was something else. It was insane. It was just absolutely nutty. But yeah, dude, our, our the team kicked ass. Um. Uh, is really fucking impressive. We're really proud of them. Really happy for them. They're in yet again another very big tournament, repping us, doing great, repping themselves. So orgs out there looking for a team that can pay some cash, get your eye on them. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's the shindig. Is there anything else that we missed because we're really really bad at this? Ah. Uh... Monday Bro. at 3 p.m. EST is when they're playing. Or not when uh, 72 pins playing, but when the when, tournament when the officially next tournament starts. starts. Yeah. So I think we can say we're we're donezo now. Is yeah, that safe I, to I say? We're donezo? We donezo? Should we okay. do the social media thing? Oh, yeah. You're, you're, you're the host today. Oh, I, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> you're, you're the one hitting the buttons. You got this yeah. shit. Yeah. So we have some social media accounts. Um, first of all, you should join our Discord because that is like the coolest place to to interact with us or see us or get a hold of us or talk to us all so, the people in there are badass yeah we have a really cool discord community uh people play all kinds of different games a lot of rocket league but other stuff too um or just hang out so people just hang out in the voice chats and and you know have a good old time the link to the discord should be in the description of the video if you're on youtube or scroll down if you're watching on twitch right now just scroll down there's a there's a button there you can click it super convenient um, if you're an audio only listener, it's kind of hard to rattle off a, an invite link to the Discord. But if you go to 72pinconnector.com, uh, you can just click the button there. There's a Discord link right there. All of our links right there. Actually. Yeah, all of our links to everything. Um, you can get podcast episode RSS feeds, all kind of cool stuff. Um, we have YouTube channel 72 Pin Connector URL, uh, twitch.tv slash 72 Pin Connector if you want to catch these live uh, every Saturday at 9 p.m. EST. You can actually talk to us during the stream. We'll answer questions and all kinds of cool stuff and play games. You can join our lobbies. And we have a Twitter page. If you want to tweet at us at, at um, 72 PC underscore official. And I think that's all the things. Um, important call out real quick. The Twitter page has plays of the day. And if you want some 72 PC swag, there's still one more week to put your clips for play of the day and play of the day. One random person from the montage will get chosen to choose whatever the fuck they want in our store we will buy it for them and ship it to them so yes. one extra little call out yes any game Prototrix asks can you submit any, yes. any clip from any game yeah not just yep. rocket league you'll see a lot of rocket league clips in that channel just because we're so rocket league heavy in the community but yeah any game is definitely definitely acceptable we've been seeing some valorant stuff in there recently which is really fucking rad so, yeah, anything is a fair game. All right. Well, I'm glad you're back, Eric. It was nice to have you back on another cast. Yeah, yeah. I hope everybody had a good time. And I guess we will catch you next week. See you, everyone. Bye. See ya.